most sweet, most generous Jesus. Receive this our humble prayer, God has received the will of mine. And keep thy faithful people from all enemies, visible and invisible, from foreign invasion, from disease and hunger, from all tribulations and mortal wounds, and deliver from future torments all who cry to thee. Alleluia. Alleluia. Generous Jesus, receive this our humble prayer as thou didst receive the widow's money. And keep thy faithful people from all enemies, visible and invisible, from foreign invasion, from disease and hunger, from all tribulations and mortal wounds. And deliver from future torments all who cry to thee. Alleluia. 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 Oh, most sweet and most generous Jesus. Receive this our humble prayer as thou hast received the widow's mind. And keep thy faithful people from all enemies, visible and invisible, from foreign invasion, from disease and hunger, from all tribulations and mortal wounds, and deliver from future torments all who cry to thee. Alleluia. 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 Creator of angels and Lord of hosts, as of old, thou didst open ear and tongue to the deaf and dumb. Likewise, open now my perplexed mind and tongue. For the grace of thy most holy name that I may cry to thee. Jesus, all my faithful angels, astonish me. Jesus, all powerful my mother's deliverance. Jesus, all sweetest beings of salvation. Jesus, all glorious king's Jesus, I'll be loved and perfect for the Jesus, I'll be the best strength. Jesus, I'll be small monks joy. Jesus, I'll be just messenger's sweetness. Jesus, I'll be simple master's abstinence. Jesus, I'll tender receive your joy sing. Jesus, I'll honor rebel virgin's chastity. Jesus, everlasting sinner's salvation. Jesus, Son of God, ever receive you for me. While you are taken and worth the pressure of hell, I, thy creature, am singing over these songs of praise. For thou hast delivered me from eternal death. But as thou hast an unutterable loving kindness, bring me from every danger as I cry. Jesus, Son of Gracious Lord, our Savior, who didst invite all the ends of the world by the radiance of thy coming, and who didst call us into thy holy church through the promise of the inheritance of incorruptible and eternal good, graciously look down on us, thy former servants, and remember not our iniquities, but according to thy infinite mercy, forgive all our sins. For though we transgress thy holy will, we do not deny thee, our God, and save thee. Against the Lord who we sin, we are alone to serve, and we alone to be the land, and we alone to become the Lord's and soul of the Heavenly King, comfort your spirit of truth, whatever present from his name, treasure of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from all impurity and save our souls of good. Glory to God in the highest heaven and earth, peace and will among men. Glory to God in the highest heaven and earth, peace and will among men. O Lord, that shall open my lips and then thou shalt be heard in grace. It is time for the Lord to act, Master. Blessed is our God, always now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Pray for me, Master. May the Lord direct thy steps. Remember me, Holy Spirit. May the Lord remember thee in his kingdom, always now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Master, bless. 
Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, the good estate of the holy churches of God, and the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy temple and for them that with faith, reverence, and the fear of God enter herein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For his holiness, our patriarch Neophi, for his eminence, our metropolitan Joseph, for the venerable priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, and all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all Orthodox Christians throughout the world and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this land, its president, its civil authorities and armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That he may deliver his people from all enemies, both visible and invisible, and confirm in us oneness of mind, brotherly love and piety, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and country, and the faithful that dwell therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, abundance of the fruits of the earth, and peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For travelers by sea, land, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the imprisoned, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance our most holy, most pure, most, most blessed, most glorious Lady, Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in all our life unto Christ our God. To thee, o Lord. For unto thee is to all glory, our worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his Pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance our most holy, most pure, most blessed, glorious Lady, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in all our life. Unto Christ our God. To thee, o Lord. For thine is the dominion, and thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Trust in princes and 
Jako blagi človek koji ubit zbog si tebe slavu voselajem, Otcu i Sinju i Svjetomu Duhu, ni ne i prisno i vo vek i veko. Amin. Savior of the world, as thou didst remember the thief upon the cross, and account us all worthy of thy heavenly kingdom, O thou who alone art compassionate. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Hearken, O Adam, and rejoice with Eve, for he who of old stripped you both naked, and by the deception hath taken all of us captive, hath been set at naught by the cross of Christ. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Nailed of thy own will upon the tree, O our Savior, thou didst deliver Adam from the curse which had come through the tree, and hast restored thou that which is according to thine image, to, an inhabit, to a habitation of paradise, and that thou art compassionate. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Today is Christ risen from the tomb, granting incorruption unto all the faithful, and he reneweth the joy of the murdering women after his suffering and resurrection. Blessed are you, men shall revive and persecute you, and shall say a manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Christ, who was begotten incorruptibly of God, the Father, is incarnate of the Virgin without defilement. The forerunner teacheth that it is not possible to lose the sandals, that bond, the bond between the Word and us, of him who delivereth mortals from deception. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for it is the reward in heaven. Into the uttermost fire shall Christ purge his enemies who do not acknowledge him as God, but he shall restore with the water of grace those who accept his divinity, delivering them from their transgressions. Glory to the Father, 
and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In thy resurrection thou hast given us incorruption, O Christ. Wherefore the glorious Basil, thy favored one, is shown in death to be like one who is yet alive. Now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Vouchsafe unto me thy loving kindness, O thou who givest birth unto the most merciful word, who hath delivered men from the corruption by his own blood. Wisdom aright. Lord, let us worship and fall down before Christ, O Son of God, who didst rise from the dead. Save us who sing to thee. Alleluia. Now it is come down from on high, O merciful Savior, and accept burial for three days. That thou mightest free us from our passions, O Lord, our life and resurrection, glory to thee. When thou was baptized in the Jordan, O Lord, the worship of the Trinity was made manifest. For the voice of the Father bear witness to thee, calling me.
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For holy art thou our God, and unto thee do we send up glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever. And unto ages of ages. Tone. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us as we have set our hope on thee. <clears throat> Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. Praise befits the upright. in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. In the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. <clears throat> Wisdom. The reading is from the epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Ephesians. Let us attend. Brethren, Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lowermost parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Brethren, God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels 
that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body, for which we live and are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Peace be unto thee, the reader, and to thy spirit, wisdom. Shine forth within our hearts, and provide thy knowledge and master of your kind, and open the eyes of our mind to understand the future of the gospel. Incline to us also the fear of the blessed commandments that trample down our common desires and nature of our spiritual and of living and thinking and doing such things that are pleasing unto thee. With our the illumination of our souls and bodies of Christ, our God, and to the grace and glory, together with the revelation of Father, in the most holy, good, and life giving spirit, now and ever unto the ages of ages. May God, through the intercession of the holy, glorious, all praised apostle and evangelist Matthew, give speech with great power unto thee that bring us the good tidings and to the fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. of the Holy Gospel according to the Holy Apostle and Evangelist Matthew. Glory to thee, O Lord. Glory to thee. Let us attend. At that time, Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison and departed himself into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Lord said to his disciples, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Peace be unto thee that bringest the glad tidings.
Good morning. We celebrate today, as well as the Lord and the Theotokos, particularly St. Theodosius, the Cenobiarch. And a very short, not even a bio, but a little, little clip uh, from his wondrous life of 105 years, in the, primarily in Palestine. After years of ascetic labor in the Holy Land, St. Theodosius formed a small community of monks near Bethlehem, which later became the monastery named for him. The community grew rapidly with monks from several cultures and languages, it became very well known for its work with the sick and the elderly and the ailing, the mentally impaired especially. When Theodosius' friend and countryman Sabas was appointed Archimandrite of all the isolated monks in Palestine, by the Patriarch, Theodosius was made the leader of all those monks who lived in community. This is the origin of his being called the Cenobiarch, which translates as chief of those living a life in community. So he was notable in the development of monastic life, of gathering people together and giving them an order to living in common. The scripture today we heard in, from Matthew, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I seem to recall seeing those words on something here in church the icon of our Lord on the iconostasis. So the, the physical surroundings where we worship echo the scripture which echoes the words of our Lord. So all of the things that we do are bound up with our pursuit of glory, the reception of that which the Lord so freely pours out upon us. Let's, suppose, let's explore some elements of how do we take this yoke upon us? What does it mean? How do I take his yoke upon me? In Ephesians, we read, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So grace is not given to us just for ourselves, but for the edifying of the body of Christ. We make up a living scripture that's continuing in the same spirit as that which is written, that we read every time. Now, when Jesus had heard in Matthew that John was cast into prison, from that time he began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Paul writing to the Corinthians, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. These are the things that we have heard. These verses give a sketch of the nature of the victory that we seek and of what taking on the yoke of Christ looks like for the sake of others, the work of Christ. But this effort, this taking on of the yoke involves a considerable amount of effort and struggle in a moment, I'll, uh, we'll hear from St. Basil the Great about why that's so. But first, a little vignette from my own life. In my teens, I was told by an independent authority, a co-worker, um, that my dad had been the best wrestler in the world in 1928-1932 span. He, I knew that he had hurt his elbow in the Olympic trials in 1928 and couldn't continue. In 1932, he was coaching wrestling, and he coached the Olympic light heavyweight champion. Neither was ever able to beat the other. I asked him why he hadn't tried to go to the trials again himself, and he said, I was the coach. I hadn't thought about him as an example of spiritual combat until preparing today's sermon, but in fact, he was. He didn't regard his change of status from wrestler to coach and missing out on the Olympics as a lowering or a problem. He didn't regret not going to the Olympics. He never was in the tone of voice when he talked about these things. He didn't regard wrestling against a worthy opponent as a problem, quite the contrary. These two men were equally matched. Their daily workout consisted in wrestling for two hours, taking a 20-minute break, and wrestling another two hours. 
A normal match consists of a couple of three-minute periods. Perhaps in those days it was uh, five, up to five three-minute periods, which, one of which can be exhausting. They went for hours. This is an inconceivable effort for those who have tried it, that the conditioning skill, determination, and sheer will that was required, combined with humility, as he showed in his attitude toward missing out on these things, that is the one he coached did achieve. But this humility, which was not a virtue his opponents would have recognized in him. There was a certain attitude toward life that in his youth he made wings out of turkey feathers and jumped out of the loft of the barn and flew for a very short time. But fortunately, being a smart guy, he prepared a mound of hay below just in case. In high school, I looked into wrestling but chose science instead. I don't regret the choice, but I do regret that I didn't seize the opportunity to learn more from my dad about how he approached the art and practice of wrestling, because I believe it would have been beneficial for my later spiritual struggles and to this day. For example, St. Basil talks about our struggle as Christians using terms familiar to opponents, to, to wrestlers, Opponent, fall, wrestling, specifically mentions these things. In his homily, on his, uh, the book that Ryan loaned me, I still have it, Ryan, on the human condition, from the homily explaining that God is not the cause of evil, St. Basil said, accordingly, the devil has remained as our opponent because of the fall that came upon us due to his abuse long ago. So the Lord has planned for us wrestling with him so that we would wrestle through obedience and triumph over the adversary. If only he had not set out to become a devil, but remained at the post at which in the beginning he was stationed by the commander. But since he became a rebel, he is an enemy of God and also an enemy of the human being who has come into existence according to the image of God. For on this account, he hates mankind because he fights against God, and he hates us both as belonging to the Master and as likenesses of God. Therefore, we were joined in battle against his wickedness as a training exercise for our souls, says St. Basil. We are, we are joined in battle against his wickedness as a training exercise for our souls by the one who plans human affairs with wisdom and foreknowledge. As a physician who uses the viper's poison to make medicines for healing. Why is he named Satan? He is Satan, therefore, because he stands in opposition to the good. He is a devil since he himself both collaborates in our sin and becomes our accuser. He rejoices in our destruction while he makes an example of us for the things we have done. So, we will have to fight a bit, show some effort, conditioning, skill, determination, and will of our own in our contests. Not in order to get a medal or to be better than others, but simply because that's the nature of Christian life. St. Basil, so the Lord has planned for us to wrestle with Satan, the rebellious one, so that we would wrestle through obedience and triumph over the, no matter how many talents you've been given, or how few, each of us needs to study how to be a Christian and to practice. What are the characteristics that the Lord and the apostles, the church, say should be present in a Christian? What things do we need to learn about and to practice? St. Nikolai Velimirovich says, those who feed on the food of the milk of sensual reflection cannot easily distinguish between good and evil. They usually come to the conclusion that all faiths are equally the same value, that sin is the indispensable shadow of virtue, that evil in general is the unavoidable companion of good. A true Christian cannot come to such erroneous conclusions. For him, the Christian, a long and laborious study is necessary in order that he, as being perfect, 
could in every given case know what is good and what is evil. This knowledge should pass over into feeling in order to be trustworthy and without error. Both good and evil wish to touch the heart of man. That is why man should be trained with his feeling in the heart to immediately recognize what approaches him in the same manner as with his tongue, he immediately senses the salt, salty and the unsalty, the sweet and the bitter. So this training enables us to recognize what is actually good and what is evil. Where do we need to embrace and accept and where do we need to reject and struggle? Even with natural ability, training is necessary. The light heavyweight wrestling champion in the 1932 Olympics, Pete Maringer, began his wrestling instruction in Kansas, where he lived in western Kansas, by buying a book about how to wrestle. He had no team, no wrestling team at his school, and so he wrestled whoever he could. And he, when he heard about meets, he would go to somehow manage to get to a wrestling meet. For one, he sold his bicycle to get money for the bus to go to the meet. And then he found an excellent coach, my father. Pete listened to him, wrestled him, and then paid his own way to the Olympic trials in Michigan and to Los Angeles for the Olympics themselves. There was no money for his coach to go with him. He was on his own. The stories about the men who competed in the 1928 and 1932 Olympics are remarkable for the consistency of their struggle, their efforts against difficulty, poverty, discouragement, and pain with absolutely no guarantee of success. For us, in contrast, the ultimate victory has been won, it is assured. We still need to exercise ourselves to enter into it and allow it, him, our Lord Jesus, to enter into us. Remembering the Lord's command and invitation with which we began to take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and looking at St. Basil again in this light, we find encouragement in his words about what the Lord has already done. St. Basil talks about Satan as the ruler of the powers of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. He continues, for this reason also, he is called ruler of the world, since his rule surrounds the earth. And thus the Lord says, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be thrown out. The Lord says, I saw Satan falling as lightning from heaven in Luke. That is, he fell from his own realm and came down, that he might be trampled underfoot by those who have hoped in Christ. Satan fell from his own realm and came down, says St. Basil, that he might be trampled underfoot by those who have hoped in Christ. Now there's a good wrestling move, to trample on the devil. For he has given power, says, continues St. Basil, the Lord has given power to his own disciples to trample on serpents and scorpions and on all the power of the enemy. Therefore, since his wicked tyranny is overthrown of the devil and the region surrounding the earth is cleansed through the passion of the Savior, who makes peace between things on earth and things in the heavens, henceforth the kingdom of heaven is proclaimed to us. St. John the forerunner says, the kingdom of heaven has come near, while the Lord proclaims the good news of the kingdom everywhere. And still earlier, the angels shouted, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. And those rejoicing at the entrance of our Lord into Jerusalem cry, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And in short, the victorious have tens of thousands of voices. They are manifested as purified from the enemy to the end. For not one wrestling or contesting will remain for us on high, nor will anyone be set against us and turn us aside from the blessed life, but we will have an uninterrupted existence without pain and enjoy the tree of life from which we were prevented from partaking since the beginning through the plot of the, through the, plot of the serpent. For God appointed the flaming sword to guard the way to the tree of life, says in 
Genesis. Passing it unhindered, may we enter into the enjoyment of good things in Christ Jesus our Lord, to whom be glory and dominion unto the ages. Amen. Good wrestling to us all. Let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say. O Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy. We pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for His Holiness, our Patriarch Neophyte, His Eminence, our Metropolitan Joseph, and all of our brethren in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for all Orthodox Christians throughout the world and for their salvation. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for this land, its president, its civil authorities, and armed forces. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again we pray for to the Lord our God that he may deliver his people from all enemies, both visible and invisible, and confirm in us oneness of mind, brotherly love and piety. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Again we pray for our brethren, the priests, the har monks, deacons, our deacons, monastics, and all of our brethren in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again we pray for the blessed and ever-memorable holy Orthodox patriarchs, for pious kings and right believing queens, and for the founders of this holy temple, and for our fathers and brethren gone to their rest before us, and the Orthodox here and everywhere laid to rest. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again we pray thee, O Lord our God, that thou mightest mercifully protect us from the devastating pestilence stirred up against us, and deliver thy faithful people from spiritual and physical death. Grant unto the sick healing and health, and unto all of us thy divine protection and help. We pray thee, O kind-hearted Lord, quickly hearken and have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray that thou mightest pacify the troubles of men in every fearful thing, compass thy faithful about with firm hope, and instill in our hearts quietude. We pray thee, O Lord, hearken and have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again we pray that you will grant to the people of this nation the will to do good, to flee from evil, and to practice all righteousness, making us respectful of life and sharers of thy blessings, caring for one another in mercy and truth. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Again we pray that, you, that thou wilt banish all evil from our hearts and wickedness from our laws, enabling us to be servants of thy holy will and performers of thy love. Again, we pray that thou wilt kindle in our hearts the will to care for the needy, to show kindness to the poor, to aid the homeless, and help the helpless. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Again, we pray for peace, health, salvation, visitation, pardon, and remission of the sins of the servants of God of this holy temple. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Again, we pray for them that bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable temple, for them that minister and them that chant, for all the people here present who obey to thee great and abundant mercy. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. For a merciful God art thou, and the lover of mankind, and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. 
Pray ye catechumens to the Lord. Be faithful for the catechumens. Let us pray that the Lord will have mercy upon them. That he will not catechize them with the word of truth. That he will reveal unto them the gospel of righteousness. That he will unite them to his holy Catholic and apostolic church. Save them, have mercy on them. Help them and keep them, O God, by thy grace. Ye catechumens, bow your heads unto the Lord. That they also with us may glorify the most honorable and majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. As many as your catechumens depart, catechumens depart, as many as our catechumens depart, let none of the catechumens remain. As many as are of the faithful, again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Wisdom. For unto thee is due all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, the good estate of the holy churches of God, and the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy temple, and for them that with faith, reverence, and the fear of God enter herein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Wisdom. That always, being guarded under thy dominion, we may send up glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages.
remember us all and all Orthodox Christians in his heavenly kingdom always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. 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 His Holiness, our Patriarch Neophyte, His Eminence, our Metropolitan, our God, remember in His Kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. This country, its President, and all civil authorities, may the Lord our God remember in His Kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. The Orthodox servants of God, Anna and Ruth, and all those suffering from the coronavirus and its effects and those ministering unto them, may the Lord our God remember in His kingdom always, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. The Orthodox servants of God departed this life in the hope of the resurrection and life eternal. The Patriarch Irenae, the Archpriest Joseph, the servants of God, Valeri, Edison, Philothea, and Olga, may the Lord our God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. <coughs> This gift set forth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. For this holy temple and for them that with faith, reverence, and the fear of God enter in, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord of mercy. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and offenses, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. Things good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. A Christian ending to our life painless, blameless, peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Us, o Lord. Calling to remembrance our most holy, most pure, most, most blessed, blessed, glorious Lady, Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, 
Let us commit ourselves and one another in all our life unto Christ our God. Truth be our Lord. Through the compassions of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thy most holy and good and life creating Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Peace be unto all. And to thy spirit. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. The Father and the Son and the Sit in. I believe in the God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all ages, by the light and God of true God, begotten of me and of one essence with the Father by whom all things. to the Lord. It is me, Hey. 
take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Thine own of thine own, offering unto thee in behalf of all and for all. We
Among the first, be mindful, O Lord, of His Holiness, Patriarch Neophyte, His Eminence, Metropolitan Joseph, whom do Thou grant unto Thy holy churches, in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, rightly dividing the word of Thy truth. And for all those living in repose that each of us now recalls, And each and every one, and each and every one, and grant unto us that with one mouth and one heart we may glorify in him thy most honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. And may the mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all. And with thy spirit. Having called to remembrance all the saints, again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our man loving God having accepted them upon us, holy, most heavenly, noetical altars, an odor of spiritual fragrance, will send down upon us the divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Lord, have mercy. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and offenses. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. Things good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. A Christian ending to our life painless, blameless, peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask. Grant this, o Lord. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another in all our life unto Christ our God. To thee, o Lord. And vouchsafe us, O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God as Father, and to say,
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Peace be unto all. And to thy spirit. Our heads unto the Position of our souls and bodies. Through the grace and compassions and love for mankind of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thy most holy and good and life creating Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Jesus Christ, our God, source of life and immortality, who art the author of all creation, visible and invisible, the equally everlasting and co-eternal Son of the Eternal Father, who through the excess of thy goodness didst in the last days assume our flesh, and was crucified for us, ungrateful and ignorant as we were, and didst cause through thy own blood the restoration of our nature, which had been marred by sin. O immortal King, accept the repentance even of me a sinner, and incline thine ear to me and hear my words. For I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am not worthy to gaze in the height of thy glory. For I have provoked thy goodness by transgressing thy commandments and not obeying thy orders. But thou, O Lord, in thy forbearance, patience, and great mercy hast not given me up to be destroyed with my sins, but thou awaitest my complete conversion. For thou, O lover of men, hast said through thy prophet that thou desirest not the death of the sinner, but that he should return to thee and live. For thou dost not a will. Thou dost not will, O Lord, that the work of thy hand should be destroyed. Neither dost thou delight in the destruction of men, but thou desirest that all should be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Therefore, though I am unworthy both of heaven and earth and even of this transient life, since I have completely succumbed to sin and am a slave to pleasure and have defaced thy image, yet being thy work in creation, wretch that I am, even I do not despair of my salvation and dare to draw near to thy boundless compassion. So receive. of my sins, thou who takest away the sin of the world, who healest men's sicknesses, who callest the weary and heavy laden to thyself and gives them rest, for thou came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. And purify me from all defilement of flesh and spirit, teach me to achieve perfect holiness in the fear of thee, that with the clear witness of my conscience I may receive the portion of thy holy things, and be united with thy holy remaining in me with the Holy Father and thy Holy Spirit. O, whole, o Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not the communion of thy immaculate and life-giving mysteries be to me for condemnation, nor let it make me sick in body or soul through my partaking of them unworthily, but grant me till my last breath to receive without condemnation the portion of thy holy things, for a communion with the Holy Spirit as a provision for eternal life and as an acceptable defense of thy dread tribunal, so that I too with all thy elect may become our partaker of thy pure joys which thou hast prepared for those who love thee, O Lord, in whom thou art glorified throughout the ages. Amen. 
O Lord my God, I know that I am not worthy or sufficient that thou should come under the roof of the house of my soul. For all is desolate and fallen, and thou hast not with me a fit place to lay thy head. But as from the highest heavens thou didst humble thyself for our sake, so now conform thyself to my humility. And as thou didst consent to lie in a, lie in a cave and in a manger of dumb beasts, so also consent to lie in the manger of my unspiritual soul and to enter my defiled body. And as thou didst not disdain to enter and die with sinners in the house of Simon the leper, so consent also to enter the house of my humble soul, which is leprous and sinful. And as thou didst not reject the woman who was a harlot and a sinner like me, when she approached and touched thee, so also be compassionate with me, a sinner, as I approach and touch thee. And let the live coal of thy most holy and body and precious blood be for the sanctification and enlightenment and strengthening of my humble soul and body, for a relief from the burden of my many sins, for a protection from all diabolical practices, for a restraint and a check on my evil and wicked way of life, for the mortification of passions, for the keeping of thy commandments, for an increase of thy divine grace, and for the advancement of thy kingdom. For it is not insolently that I draw near to thee, O Christ my God, but as taking courage for thy unspeakable goodness, and that I may not by long abstaining from thy communion become a prey to the spiritual wolf. Therefore I pray thee, O Lord, who alone art holy, sanctify my soul and body, my mind and heart, my emotions and affections, and wholly renew me. Root the fear of thee in my members, and make thy sanctification indelible in me. Be also my helper and defender, guide my life in peace, and make me worthy to stand on thy right hand with thy saints, through the prayers and intercessions of thy Immaculate Mother, of the ministry and angels, of the Immaculate Powers, and of all the saints who have ever been pleasing to thee. Amen. O only pure and sinless Lord, who through the ineffable compassion of thy love for men didst assume our whole nature, through the pure and virgin blood of her who supernaturally conceived thee, by the coming of the divine spirit and by the will of the eternal Father, O Christ Jesus, wisdom, peace, and power of God, who in thy ascension of our nature didst suffer thy life-giving and saving passion, the cross, the nails, the spear, and death, mortify all the deadly passions of my dumb body, thou who in thy burial didst spoil the dominions of hell, bury with good thoughts my evil schemes, and scatter the spirits of wickedness, thou who by thy life-giving resurrection on the third day didst raise up our fallen first parent, Raise me up from sunken sin and should just me ways of repentance. Thou who by thy glorious ascension didst deify our nature which hath, thou hast assumed, and didst honor it by thy session at the right hand of the Father, make me worthy by partaking of thy holy mysteries of a place at thy right hand among those who are saved. Thou who by the descent of the Spirit of the Paraclete didst make thy holy disciples worthy vessels, make me also a recipient of his coming. Thou who art to come again to judge of the world with justice, Grant me also to meet thee on the clouds, my maker and creator with all thy saints, that I may unendingly glorify and praise thee with thy eternal Father, and thy all holy good and life-giving spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Our sovereign Lord Jesus Christ, our God, who alone has authority to forgive men their sins, <clears throat> overlooking thy goodness and love for men, all my offenses, whether committed with knowledge or in ignorance, and make me worthy to receive without condemnation, Thy divine glory is spotless in life-giving mysteries, not for punishment nor for an increase of sins, but for purification and sanctification, and as a pledge of the life and kingdom to come, as a protection and help and for the destruction of enemies, and for the blotting out of my many transgressions. For thou art a God of mercy and compassion and love for men, and to thee we send up the glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. I know, O Lord, that I partake of thy immaculate body and precious blood unworthily, and that I am guilty and eat and drink judgment to myself by not discerning the body and blood of thee, my Christ and God, by taking courage from thy compassion. I approach thee, for thou hast said, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Therefore have compassion, O Lord, and do not make an example of me a sinner, but deal with me according to thy mercy. And let these holy things be for my healing and purification, and enlightenment and protection and salvation, and sanctification of body and soul, for the turning away of every fantasy and all evil practice, and diabolical activity working subconsciously in my members, for confidence and love towards thee, for reformation of life and security, for an increase of virtue and perfection, for fulfillment of the commandments, for communion with the Holy Spirit, as a provision for eternal life and as an acceptable defense 
for the Dread Tribunal, not for judgment or for condemnation. From solid lips, from an abominable heart, from an unclean tongue, out of a polluted soul, receive my prayer, O oh my Christ. Reject me not for my words, nor my ways, nor even my shamelessness, but give me courage to say what I desire, my Christ, and even more, even more teach me what to do and say. I have sinned more than the harlot, who on learning where thou wast lodging, bought mirror, and dare to come and anoint thy feet, my Christ, my Lord and my God, as thou didst not repulse her when she drew near from her heart. Neither a word abominate me, but grant me thy feet to clasp and kiss. With the fear of God and with faith and love draw nigh. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. God is the Lord and hath appeared unto us. Into the world, safe sinners, as whom I am. Let this is true, they may know precious blood. Wherefore I pray thee, have mercy on me. Forgive me my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, in knowledge and ignorance. And vouchsafe me without condemnation to partake of thy most free mysteries, to the remission of sins and life everlasting. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, receive thee to taste of communion. For I will not reveal the mystery to the enemies, nor will I give thee a kiss as a Judas, but like the thief who I confess thee, nor no many are more than thy kingdom. May the communion of my holy mysteries be given to the judgment.
shine, shine. Oh. mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Having asked that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us commit ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. For thou art our sanctification, and unto thee do we send up glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. In peace let us depart. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us sing. O Lord, who dost bless them that bless thee, and sanctify them that put their trust in thee, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Preserve the fullness of thy church, sanctify them that love the beauty of thy house. Do thou glorify them by thy divine power, and forsake us not that hope in thee. Give peace to thy world, to thy churches, to the priests, and to all thy people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from thee, the Father of lights. And unto thee do we send up glory and thanksgiving and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, true healer of the souls and bodies, who showed such charity and made people healthy who were suffering physically and spiritually, receive favorably our prayer. O God, holy wonder worker, with your strong power, chase away the deadly virus that causes fear, suffering, and death. In these days when our faith is being tested, calm down the anxiety and heal the sick. Lord, stop the power of the disease, protect the youths, and bring them to their senses. Support the sick and the elderly people, and endow them with health, peace, and high spirits. 
Through the intercession of our Sovereign Lady, the Most Holy Theotokos, of our Venerable Father John of Rila, the Wonder Worker, and of the Holy and Mercenaries and Healers, and of all the saints. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord from henceforth and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord from henceforth and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord from henceforth and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord from henceforth and forevermore. And all the Lord at all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. In the Lord shall my soul be praised. Let them be hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And deliver me from all my tribulations. for mankind, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Thee, O Christ, God, our hope. Glory to Thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Father, bless. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, through the intercessions of his most pure mother, whose temple this is, of the holy, glorious, and all laudable apostles, of our father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, and of the holy Theodosius the Great, the Cenobiarch, the Hieromartyr Hyginus, the Pope of Rome, Saint Theodosius the ascetic of Rosus and Antioch, Saint Stephen of Placidi Placidian near Constantinople, Saint Agapius of Apimea in Syria, Saint Theodosius of Mount Athos, the Metropolitan of Trebizond, Saint Michael of Clopes Monastery, the Fool for Christ, and Saint Vitalis of the Monastery of Abbasaridos at Gaza, and Saint Joseph of Cappadocia, whose memory we celebrate this day, and of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anne, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and the lover of mankind. Amen. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, and welcome everyone. Good to see you. A few announcements. Uh, if anyone available today right after the liturgy to help with some of the Christmas cleanup. We still have the tree, the wreaths, and just uh, the service books need to be put away, little things and larger things. If anyone is available to stay immediately after the liturgy, I'll co help coordinate the cleanup. Um, if you would like to schedule a house blessing, please contact me directly. That's right. And also, uh, beginning Wednesday, February 3rd, uh, I'm going to be offering a Orthodoxy 101 class. Uh, I'm going to start out just purely uh, virtual for now, and uh, God willing, we maybe could go to, into a hybrid version at some point in the future. But that, uh, I'll send an email out, so keep an eye out for it, but that's going to be Wednesday evenings uh, at 7.15 uh, for about an hour. So please uh, look for that email. It'll be uh, via Zoom. And if you haven't yet figured out Zoom, there are lots uh, who can help you. Uh, please ask for help to get set up to join the class. 
The parish council has begun the process of strategic planning for the year 2021, uh, and our focus for this year is worship, improving our understanding and experience of the worship services. Uh, so we're working with Jane Howard, a uh, strategic planning facilitator who also helped us during our capital campaign uh, to come up with the, the strategic plan for this year and uh, she'll be helping us also for next year. Every year we'll go through this process for the four different uh, years and the four different uh, focuses we have uh, for those years. Um, so if you have any thoughts or ideas about uh, how to improve the understanding or experience of our worship services, please talk to uh, myself or a parish council member. Uh, and uh, along those lines, um, I'm going to announcements. Uh, the different parts of the liturgy, just five minutes every Sunday right afterwards uh, so that we can all uh, begin to improve the understanding of our worship services. Okay, and what else was there? Oh yes, also the, the holy water for Theophany is here. It has been blessed and uh, you can uh, to fill them up and take them home with you and use throughout the year. Uh, we'll probably be moving this set up, uh, but it will, the main reservoir will be again on the side of the church where you can uh, refill your, your water bottles. This week we have a third hour via Zoom at 9 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The parish council meeting is on Tuesday evening via Zoom. Uh, there's no other weekday services, uh, but next weekend we'll have not vigil, but great vespers on Saturday at 5 o'clock, not 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, we'll do Great Vespers. And then in the morning on Sunday, we'll do Matins at 8.30 and followed by the Divine Liturgy. So we're, we've done that a few times now and the pattern we're currently on is about every fourth week, uh, we're following that uh, altered uh, schedule. Uh, so. Keep an eye on the e-weekly and the online calendar to make sure you know what time the services are. Amen. Up and venerate the cross and receive the blessed bread. Lord is come down from on high, merciful Savior, and accept our meal for three days. Now thou hast us free us from our passions, O Lord, our life and resurrection, glory to thee. And he dances for joy at the resurrection, and all the ends of the earth he festival, at the rising from the dead, O most merciful one. With the streams of light, he so deceived the rain desert, and with sighs from the depths of light, so deceived in the labors of full and hundredfold. And became us a beacon for the whole world, resplendent with miracles. O Theodosius, our Father, entreat Christ our God that our souls be saved. When thou was baptized in the Jordan, O Lord, the worship, worship of the, the Trinity, Trinity made its appearance. For the voice of the Father bore witness to him when he called thee his beloved Son, and the Spirit in the form of a dove confirmed the truth of the Word. O Christ our God, who has appeared and has in light in the world, glory to Thee. A blessing the Lord be upon you. Can I wait your turn? Oops, sorry. Please, can you pick that up? These tongues are sticky. A blessing the Lord be upon you.
Glory to the O God, glory to the O God, glory to the O God.